So welcome to part two of my special thanks to Freddy3911 who sent me a shitload of autographs and pictures. And like I'm not even a big autograph guy, like, but this is just a lot of money he invested in this. Way too much money, man. I I almost want to say please dude, don't do this again, only because this is way too much money that he's spending on me. Like, pictures and art, it's just too much money. I feel bad. I really, it's like, please, dude, don't do this again. I feel bad that you spend so much money on this. It's a lot of money. A lot of money. Sorry, I mean, I just, I feel bad. <clears throat> Dear Matt, here's another great gift for you. Sorry I didn't send it to you sooner. It's definitely a great gift. It's, my printer can be a diff bit difficult to put it that way. As you can see, these are some more autographs from some of the greatest celebrities in horror and cinema history. First off is Jamie Kennedy. I try to shorten it, but there's so much to say about him. He is like the best neighbor. He is not literally my neighbor, but he is very welcoming like one. He literally does not mind if you ask him about any movie he was in. He's that open. He loves his fans. One day he actually asked me to escort him to the convention. He was like, Hey, Corey, could you escort me to the convention? I don't want to get in trouble. I jokingly responded by saying, Sure, Jamie, get me in trouble. He found me very kind hard to return to his table to get autographs from almost everyone I know that likes him. As you'll see in the photos in this case, you'll see I went to a party with him. It was a birthday party for his agent. Now to Heather Lanningcamp. Not much to say that has been said before. She was very talkative about Johnny Depp and, of course, Robert England. Robert is a great guy, by the way. When I, her, when I told her about what I do for you, she said, Corey, that's very nice. It is. She found it very original. Now to your other favorite Elm Street girl, Lisa Wilcox. She was very lovely and talkative, just like Heather. She also talked a bit about Mark Hamill when I noticed a photo of her with him from Watchers 4. I know you didn't like it, but it doesn't hurt to mention it. Next is Anthony Michael Hall. Mr. Hall is nothing but generous. He remembered me from another convention, and that's Dylan wrote my name on the photo, which I still own. He did one for you for no additional charge. He's fantastic. Wow. Remember your Q&A from earlier in 2012? I asked you about who you think should play the Flash in a movie. Next is one of your idols, John Wesley Shipp. He was very impressed to hear about you. I told him how much of a fan you are of the TV series. I told him I plan to check it out. I told him I plan to check it out soon. Yeah, I love the Flash. It's a great show it deserved more than one season. Next to Carl Weathers, he was very impressive. When I got you the autograph he said, Where's Matt? I said, He doesn't go to these. I get these from him every once in a while. Carl responded by saying, Tell him I wanted to shake hands with him. I said I will. That'd be nice, but uh, I just don't get to conventions. I don't I can't afford that. I mean I don't think you could afford this. This is too much. I wish I could have asked him more questions, but he had a crazy long line like Robert Ingram always does. Oh. Next is Tom Zavini. Tom is a very kind-hearted gentleman. Everyone says he's a jerk, but I found him to be very cool. He actually let me interview him at the convention during convention hours. I'll try to show it to you sometime. Most of them were questions I could tell he was not prepared for them. Some were obvious and some were very, very, very random and kind of out of nowhere. He was fun and everything I was hoping he would be. The next one is quite an interesting trio of actors. The only thing the three have in common are they appeared in an independent comedy titled Brutal Massacre, a comedy, that's right, released on DVD back in 2008. I remember in one of your older videos you did a DVD and VHS collection video. In one part I saw Brutal Massacre on one of your shelves. I always wondered why you haven't reviewed that film. It's one of my favorite comedies. I do like the film, I just haven't had time to review it. I first saw it on a day I needed a good comedy. I came back home from a very busy stop and sh shop shift. The day was July 3rd, the busiest holiday of the whole year. Now to their names. First is Brian O'Halloran. He played in a lot of Kevin Smith films such as Clerks, Dom, and Volder. He is nothing but cool. He told me, Corey, I have never met a fan as generous as you. I hope you never change. I instantly responded by saying, I love the way I am, so I doubt that will happen. He smiled in response. As you can see what he wrote, you have a good friend. He was referencing me. Next is David Nahn from American World in London. He was highly social, not just about American World, but with other films he did, such as The Ice Cream Man and Brutal Massacre. He drew me that the funniest part was the 
I don't like dubbing, it doesn't look right, because his mouth was out of sync with the words. Next is, of course, Gunnar Hansen. I did not talk a lot about Chainsaw with him. We did talk a bit about the remake. I asked what his cameo was going to be. He said he would have been the truck driver that Jessica Biel tat and took it from him. He also mentioned how Michael Bay, Andrew Form, and Brad Fuller lied, saying that he, Gunner that is, asked for $100 million or something like that to be paid for his one day of shooting that scene. He also told me a very interesting story about Andrew Bernarski, who played Leatherface in the remake and prequel. It turns out Andrew loves to badmouth the other Leatherface actors, mainly Gunner. Gunner asked me, did you hear what he did? I was like, what? What did he do? He told me that Andrew was arrested for animal cruelty. The neighbors called the police here and crying puppies. Forgot what kind of dogs they were. The police found out the puppies were being starved and Andrew was arrested on the spot. I found this very ironic and obviously very upsetting. Well, I, I've heard Andrew Bernard is a dumbass. So, that doesn't surprise me. Gunner also told an interesting story about a scene in Brutal Master where he was filming the scene in the diner where he eats in handfuls. He said he based that performance on, I believe, his grandmother or mother-in-law where she would eat like that and have to spit some of it up. He was also talking about how the writer-director Stephen Mena has an outline for the sequel to Brutal Massacre where David Dodd and his crew need to go to the Amazon pretend to be a film crew while trying to find and rescue Brian O'Halloran. That'd be fun, I'd see that sequel. Don Hansen said his character will return as a bigger, more prominent role, insisting going into the jungle with the crew. Sounds like a fun idea, I think. David Norman, David Norman told me the same plot outline, but said S Stephen may change it because there was some movie that came up with a similar plot. I don't know what it was, though. Can't remember right now. Now to the next one. You'll love this one. Sean Clark. Sean... I met at the first convention that I went to. I got the signature from him back in August. He's very cool and kind-hearted. He's an agent for different celebrities. Just to name some of his clients, they include Shavar Ross from Different Strokes in Friday 13 Part 5, Billy Bryan who played the state pup Marshmallow Man from Ghostbusters and also puppeteer for the original Child's Play. He actually had a photo at his table of the shot where Chucky was about to bite Catherine Hicks' arm. And the last group I will name for Sean's clients are the cast from Revenge of the Nerds. The cast from the original, I believe, I'll also tell you, he loved your videos on the Blu-rays of Halloween 2 and Halloween 3. I sent the videos to his Facebook, that's how he saw them. He told me, your friend knows the stuff. Oh, that's very kind. You didn't have to do that. That's very kind. But, uh, yeah, Sean Clark does a great job with those Horrors Hollow Grounds. I mean, I meant what I said. Especially the bits where he's with, uh, God, what was his name from Part 2? Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2. It's like, oh, no, we're doing Halloween 2. <laughs> Oh, you're doing Halloween too, huh? Can't do MC2. I sent the videos. Uh, wow, well, that was very kind of you. You didn't have to do that. Next is Derek Mears. This guy is such a blast to be around. He loves the fans, and he is a fanboy of horror movies in general. Before I say anything about how he is at the Q&A sessions, one of the funniest stories he told me was when he was at Rotten Shot in Worcester, Massachusetts. He got to share a limo with Robert Engel and Lance Henriksen, I believe, also William Forsyth and Kane Hodder. He's basically telling us how he was geeking out and explaining it's a dream come true in that case. At the first convention I met him, he was stealing the Q&A panel from Kane Hodder. If you ever saw a Q&A panel with the Jason Atkins, you can obviously tell Kane is used to taking over the panel, but Derek pulls the rug off underneath him. It's hysterical to watch. Just as funny seeing the Jason Atkins jokingly mention Warrington Gillette in front of Steve Dash. That is dynamite. Let me tell you that. That's this Tuesday night. Patricia Arquette's replacement on Diamond Hill Street for the Dream Master. She was really nice as well, but I prefer Heather Lane and Lisa Wilcox personally. The three of them shared a Q&A panel together as well. Mike Perez, producer Never Sleep Again, more brands of Crystal Lake Memories, and I went to it. Mike's a really cool guy too, just to let you know. Back to Tuesday night. She, Heather, and Lisa are a very funny group. They all talked about the fun experiences of Elm Street movies, but the main person they spoke about was Robert England. Everyone knows this, but I may as well say it. Robert England is nothing but the sweetest, most thoughtful, and courteous celebrity you could ever want to see. Some fans were pretty courageous in asking about the remake. Heather Lee and Tuesday said they tried to give it a chance, but they stood up and walked out of the theater. <laughs> Alright, that's good. I like that. I like that they walked out of the movie. That's what I should have done. Should have walked out of my head while watching the movie. The one that sadly ended the panel was this idiot asking, Do you think Rob Zombie would have made a better Elm Street remake? Everyone booed him out of the Q&A room. It was the same dumbass who insulted John Carpenter about Ghost of Mars and Steve from L.A. 
Well, then that guy should do a kick in the nuts, to be honest. Well, that's certainly the least is Dean Kane. The guy was just okay. Did not hate him, but I certainly did not like him. You could tell by his face that he had no interest in being there. The website was certainly false advertising by saying that he looks forward to me and his fans. As you and the guys would say, blah, 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 bullshit. He was not a hateful guy. He was okay. But I definitely prefer me and John Wesley Shipp and Stanley who were at the same convention. I hope you enjoy these. I just want to say once again, I don't get, I don't get you these because I feel like I have to. This is far from that. But because I want to get you these things. You should have a taste of the convention fever that I'm giving to you through these gifts. Once again, I hope you enjoy. All I can say, man, is it's uh, pretty amazing. Um, well, like you said, you know, you said that you get these because you want to. I feel bad because that's just sort of, that's, I don't want to say my nature because that's very egotistical for me to say, oh, I have to do that. But it, is, it really is amazing that all of this stuff, this is just amazing. And I still... Right over there, have the other ones you sent me, man. It's it's amazing. It's just no words. See what I mean? No words. It just it's a lot of autographs, and I I've heard how expensive they are. I've heard how much they are. It just I almost I almost yeah I do want to say don't do this. Because it's a lot of money, you know, it's a lot of money. And it's like, I don't deserve 14 autographs. And, you know, okay, one of them was for free at the Michael Hall. But, you know, I guess if it doesn't matter to you, then yeah. But I just, you know, I know you say that you want to, you don't have to. But I also have to say that, you know, just, you know, when you say kind things, that's all I ask for, you know, I don't need stuff, just, you know, a kind word is fine, and you definitely did it, and, 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 and then some. I, I, I guess what I'm saying is I'm very appreciative, I'm very thankful, I'm very shocked, I'm very blown away. I just want to say sincerely thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your kindness. Thank you very much for your uh, wow. Just I just want to say a sincere thank you very much, and um, that's pretty much it. I, I I don't know what else to say. I'm sort of blown away by it, and a lot of fun stories. I like that the Heather and Lisa. I like that they walked out of the Elm Street remake. That's what I would have done. I would have walked out in my own head, seeing that piece of shit. I love that though. I love that. I really do. I love that they admitted that. I love that they weren't like being, oh yeah, we, you know, they actually were were honest. I like that. That dumbass who asked those stupid questions. Maybe he should be banned from the damn convention. Oh, go some more suck. Well, maybe you suck. But. Uh, Either way, Freddy3911, his first name is Corey. I'm not going to say his last name for privacy, but Corey. Just want to say thank you very much. It's very kind of you. Um, yeah, Brian O'Halloran was right. you very kind to do that. You're very kind, extremely kind, generous. The only reason I'm sort of stuttering is just, I can just imagine how much money this was, and it really makes me feel bad. I know you're going to say, oh, don't worry about it, but it, I can't help it, it's just my nature. When someone spends that much money, it's, you know, I feel bad, it's just how it is. That's just my nature, but I just want to say sincerely, thank you very much. Um, and uh, thank you. So either way, thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.